What's going on team? Welcome to the vlog. It is Wednesday, January 13th and today's video I just wanted to share an interview about how I got into the fitness industry, how I became a personal trainer and if you're thinking about getting into the industry becoming a trainer, I wanted to share this interview in hopes that it might help one of you guys become a trainer um, and let me know if it does. So hopefully you guys enjoy and here's the interview. What's going on guys? Malik. Welcome Malik. to the Coach Malik, Malik. Show. Malik. My name is Malik Benin and uh, I am going to be your virtual coach. I'm gonna give you the knowledge, the tips, and the advice to help you perform better in all aspects of your life. All right, yeah, so this is for my kinesiology class. Um, basically just trying to get a feel for like what goes on in the kinesiology field and like what educational requirements are what like career opportunities obviously you're a personal trainer so yeah i just wanted to ask you a few questions about that um i guess i'll start with like how did you get started like how did you become interested in this field personally i uh if, i don't know if you watched my transformation video but i was like picked on a lot as a kid it was more for like a confidence thing mm -hmm. um and i worked out like I was just sick of being a small kid. I remember getting like tripped at school and stuff. And like my brother's a little bigger than me. So I, uh, I don't know, it was, just, it was more of a confidence thing. And so I worked out a lot, like bodyweight stuff when I was like 13. And then high school sports, sports really got me into it. Mm -hmm. um, playing basketball, playing football, and just trying to get better at football basically by getting bigger, faster, and stronger. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you just look up Google, how to get bigger, how to get faster, how to get stronger. <laughs> and all this Stuff came up. And so I started reading and uh, really like just put the... Um, you know, learnings to practice. And then I did slowly start getting bigger and stronger. And then, you know, after high school, obviously I needed to get a job. And so like the only thing I knew the best was the gym. because I was there all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's basically how I got into the field was I just literally just like started the front desk to get my foot in the door at 24 hour fitness. And then probably like six months into being front desk, they were like, you want to be a personal trainer? And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> and um, I was like, absolutely. Yeah. I just like loved helping other people like so fitness for me was it like gave me my confidence for you know for some reason and I loved giving that to other people and so like that's kind of how I started off was just you know sports and then kind of like transitioning that into a career uh 24 fitness after high school awesome um so you mentioned you took some like nutrition classes and anatomy was there any um particular education you had to have or like certification or training so to be a personal trainer, you either had to have, at least at that time, it, it could change now. Um, I think just the certification, most places will work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then it was either you had a master or you have uh, a personal training certification. So NASM obviously is the most popular one. Took that recently. Um, Nesta was the one I took back then. So there you learned a lot about not only just the body, but also how can you build a business through personal training. So that was kind of cool. And so those were the certifications I got to, to become, you know, a certified personal trainer to be able to train people inside the gym. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what would you say some other common career paths are in this field? So the most, uh, a big, a big one right now, or just in general is physical therapy, mm -hmm. um, working on athletes who are either injured or coming back from an injury, uh, or even just like, you know, gen pop, like a dad hurt his knee and he, he, he's coming back or, you know, a, a lower back um, issue that they're trying to rehab. Mm -hmm. So rehab, rehab is a big one. Um, uh, massage as well, like massage therapists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they know a lot about the, uh, the body and the muscles and what trigger points kind of release certain stressors on the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, another popular one is, um, I would say yoga instructors. It's a little different, but they also have to know a lot about the body. Just, you know, different positions for the body you know, what actually does help the body strength, uh, you know, get stronger through certain yoga positions. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll say those are the three besides personal training or strength and conditioning coach. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of strength and conditioning coaches. So I'll say those are like the popular ones and physical therapy probably topping them, topping them all. Yeah, definitely. I am super interested in physical therapy and sports therapy for sure. And people, obviously people we're love that. It's very, it's very it obviously working out. It's very impactful for for your client. Like they, like I'll never forget my physical therapist when he helped me with my knee. Mm -hmm. It was like he was like, you know, for that three months or four months when I was doing it every day or three times a week. It was like you build like a friendship with that person. You right. Know? Yeah. When I was so, seventeen, I had a physical therapist for my shoulder, and he was like my favorite human. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> cool, you know, and then you learn so much. You just learn like, oh, like, I didn't know my shoulder does that. You know, or I didn't know my shoulder's supposed to do that. Or mm-hmm. I didn't know this, like, small exercise can actually benefit in, like, a lot of ways. Right. Yeah. Yeah, cool. that's so tough to understand as, like, a kid that's just playing sports. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You just think about throwing the baseball or hitting the volleyball or hitting somebody in football. But, like, it all goes into, like, how you push off your feet or how you – you know, block somebody and where, where's your elbow position or stuff like that. It's pretty interesting when you get to learn it all. Right. Exactly. All right. Um, what skills, abilities, and personal attributes are assess- essential to success in your job? The one that I did not expect, I'm just going to start with this one. There's obviously, obviously you have to know the body, obviously it's, you know, foundational, but the one skill that I did not expect to you had, it was pretty essential is, people skills, communication skills. Um, if you can't communicate with your client about how they should move their body, like you're just like, do this, do that. It's very hard to have them do this or that because they don't know what this or that means. Right. So like saying like, you know, different cues, you know, tighten your belly button, bring your belly button into your spine, mm-hmm. um, you know, straighten your back, like, you know, pinch your shoulder blades, like there's a pencil behind your shoulder blades, like things like that on, on, on that level. But also on the level of like, you know, when people are going through physical therapy, they're usually going through like a mental slash, like a, like a little mental depression because they, yeah. you know, they're not used to being hurt. Like they feel like they can't do what they did before. So also like relating to them on that level and kind of just listening to them. Listening is a big skill. So I would say communication and listening were unexpected skills to have. And then obviously the skill of knowing the body and knowing how to coach that person um, on how to improve and, you know, what they're doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. communication skills are definitely. Yeah, no, that's super true. Um, <laughs> my next question was going to be, was there anything that surprised you when you entered this field? I guess that'll be communication. Definitely, definitely communication and, and like holding a conversation, you know, like at the front desk, I was, so, it was just kind of like going deeper into that. But like at the front desk, you're so used to just saying like, Hey, Hey Nick, have a good workout. You know, like, mm-hmm. Hey Ashley, have a good workout. Whereas like when you're personal training or physical therapy or you're with that one person for an hour, you have to really go deeper into the conversation. So I was like super shy as a kid. So that like really got me so nervous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm about to talk to this person for an hour. Like the first like few clients I had, I'd just have them work out for the whole hour because I didn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if I just have them do a plank for a little bit longer, I won't have to say anything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So it was, it was just like learning how to like talk to people during that hour and learning how to keep the conversation going and also have them get their work done. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, like they're there with you for an hour. They're not with a lot of people for an hour besides their coworkers and maybe their family. Like, you know, they might see their friends here and there, but like as a physical therapist or a personal trainer, you see them multiple times a week. So I would say that was definitely shocking to me. It was like, all right, like, even though I'm shy internally, um, I'm going to have to like extrovertly, like, you know, ask them questions, you know, ask them like, you know, not only ha- how's your day been, but like, you know, oh, like you worked a long day. Like, how's that feel on your legs? Like, is that hurting your knee? And then like, if stuff gets like, we were already, you know, obviously we, after a while, your physical therapist, you already know a lot about their body or he already knows a lot about your body. So then it's more like, you know, how's family life? You know, like how's, how's work-life balance? Like, you know, are you, are you, cause health is all around, you know? And right. so that was very, it really helped me out with my communication skills, to be honest. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, what is a typical session for you? Like, or a typical day even? Definitely. There's not a typical session. That's definitely it's based off the person for sure. At least with personal training, I feel like with classes, it's a little bit more, you know, like, you know, with the orange theory classes, it's a little bit more because it's the same thing almost all the time, or at least like the energy wise, you yeah. have a lot of people, you do the workout and then you individualize it based on the people a little bit. But in terms of personal training, the day would go based off of a lot of people want to train before work or after work. So your hours are either and then my last time would be like 9 or 10 30 so then i would have you know i would maybe do my workout then like a 10 30 11 go eat lunch at like 12 or 1 you know hopefully have four and then after work people start coming in at like 4 35 and I'd start training again from like five to you know the last client like eight or nine so you're technically like on you know from six in the morning to like six or nine at night and uh you know in in between that trying to get your workout in trying to get your food in trying to program for people so a lot of the times like someone said like oh i'm trying to obviously the main two goals are gain weight and gain muscle no one's trying to gain fat (laughs) people might have like oh like you know like i have a shoulder injuries you know like 
how do we how do we build a program for you where we can actually work on your rear delts in the program and not do too much pushing to where your your shoulder is going to feel better over time or if they have like a really hurt knee it's usually because they have a tight hamstring or inactive or tight glutes mm -hmm. so like how can we in our warm up or our cool down how can we stretch that out and over time our squats getting way stronger not because we're technically getting stronger but because we're loosening up your hamstrings so programming and learning each client individually um, in the middle of that day. Yeah, that's kind of like how, how a basic day would go for personal training. And then classes, same thing. Like, you know, it's either you train early classes or late classes, sometimes like a little lunch, a lunch session here and there. You go into the class, do your class, and then afterwards, you know, maybe a couple uh, a couple members or clients have like questions where, you, you know, you kind of answer them like, hey, like during the plank in the class today, my back was feeling a little a little hurting. And you can say, okay, can, you know, can I see you do a, a plank real quick? And their lower back's kind of like arcing. So kind of tell them to bring their belly button up or something. But yeah, very little downtime when you're actually on. And then when you're, when you're off, you're off. But um, the, the hours are pretty flexible for being a personal trainer more than a class. Because with a personal trainer, you can kind of go based off of your, your client schedules as well. You know, most of the time they don't want to really work on the weekends or just Saturday mornings or something of Sundays off. So it's pretty flexible. Okay. So it's yeah. not, it's not like a typical nine to five. It's like whenever your clients want to work out. Exactly. It's not like a nine to five at all. And like, it could, you can have like three in the morning and like <laughs> four at night and like one in the afternoon. So you're like, you feel like you're there all day, but you're not like technically like working all day. Um, so you really have to kind of, I would say getting into the field, my biggest advice would be to know what type of schedule you want in the beginning, obviously be pretty open, have a pretty open schedule to kind of like fill those slots. But once those slots start getting filled, maybe you get just get more night clients or you get more morning clients and just choose one of those mm -hmm. um i had i had a, a trainer one of the top trainers at 24 really kind of teach me that he was like i come in at 12 and i leave at nine and i'm booked from that time but i don't come in before 12 like mm -hmm. he just doesn't come in before 12 because he knows like if you if you are doing the 6 a.m to 9 a.m and then you're coming back and forth and back and forth you get really drained yeah. So like the beginning of it maybe do that for a little bit but definitely my recommendation is like know what you want to work say your schedules like that and just try to book those hours and don't don't be too flexible with your client schedule just tell them like this is my schedule it could be flexible with you like you're like i want to work this time this when i get my energy but don't you know don't be a slave to time where like oh your client says oh can we go 30 minutes before like no you know <laughs> you, 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 there's a lot of there's a lot of self-discipline and it's true because they'll, they'll play ass like can we do 30 minutes later like, no, sorry. Like I have a schedule and right. even though it is personal training, like again, when you're new, you, you get the clients you can get, but when you kind of have your clientele, you just, this is the times. And, um, I've seen a lot of personal trainers get burned out because of that. So that's like my mm -hmm. biggest recommendation is having the self-discipline to have, you know, to set your schedule and to set it. Okay. Good yeah. To know. Awesome. Okay. Um, what are your responsibilities as a personal trainer? Responsibilities. I would say there's a lot. You're actually kind of a therapist in a way because you have to listen to everyone. So <laughs> it's so true. Like they'll come in and be like, how's your day? And then it just unloads. Because, yeah. un you know, working out is like a stress reliever. So mm -hmm. a lot of people just like to relieve a lot of their stress. And so it was just good thing. You know, a big, respons a big responsibility in that uh, is um, being a confidential. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, having a lot of confidentiality. So when a, when a client tells you something like, you know, thank you for sharing that with me, Lisa. Like, I really appreciate you being honest with me. And I just want to let you know, this is all confidential. Everything you say with me stay, stays with me. You know, it doesn't leave the door. That gives your clients a lot of trust in you confidentiality and then another thing is just doing no harm to your client that's a big responsibility even if they want to do a overhead squat or a snatch or a power clean maybe they're not ready because they're going to harm themselves if they want to do it so like do no harm is something i learned a lot is like as a trainer a big responsibility is just making sure your client doesn't get hurt mm -hmm. um you know during the workouts and making sure that it's safe for them like doing a baseline test you know a lot of responsibility is like just making sure that they're able to do the workout that you give them don't just give them your workout because they'll see you working out and be like, oh, like, I want to do what you did yesterday, Chrissy. Like, I want to do like what you did. And you're like, I love you, Ashley, but I've been working out for like 10 years. Like, you know, I've been working out for five years and you haven't worked out for like 30 years. So <laughs> we'll, right. we'll get there, you know. And then so I would say that's a big responsibility is just do no harm. And then uh, another one is just uh, instilling confidence in, in, uh, in motivation and, and accountability. So, so I, I would say out of all those three accountability, is big which is comes with motivation for a reason if they could do it on their own they would do it a big part of them paying you not only per hour is they're also paying you to make sure that they stay on their workouts when they're out with you right. and so uh, those are the three that i've learned that are probably the biggest responsibilities is like confidentiality do no harm to the client and just keep them accountable okay great um what do you like most about what you do man so 
there's a certain part when you train somebody and you've probably gone through this as, as yourself or seen someone go through it, but there's a stage where they come into you like press, you know, they feel worthless. Their, their confidence is at all time low. And then you're working, working over, you know, weeks and weeks and months and months. And there's a certain part where they start to go like, I can do this. Like I got like their confidence starts to switch and you could see it. You could feel it. They start coming in and you're like, you know, the first couple of sessions are like a minute and they drop to like 50 seconds. You're like, come on, wait, we had 10 more seconds. But like, there's a certain point where you're like a minute, and they'll go like a minute, 10, or they'll go like a minute, they'll go, they'll go a little bit more. And like, that is literally, I fall in love with that as like just seeing people's like inside energy change within themselves. They believe in themselves now. And like it overflows to their work. It overflows to their family life. Like, oh, like, you know, me and my, my husband or me and my wife wanted to do this thing. We haven't done it forever, but we're going on this trip finally. You know, because they just feel confident to do it or something. And that's what I love most about my about personal training, you know, at Orange Theory, at 24, on my own, online. Wherever I'm training someone is like, watching them go through that transition of like, oh, like, yes, like I got this. Going from like, I can't do this to I can do this. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's like, it's like a, a really good feeling. Like you help, that's obviously a good feeling, but like if they put in all the work, so just guiding them through it is just probably the, the most rewarding feeling that I like, yeah, about the job. Yeah. Cause yeah, their, their, their life is just changing and you know that you're, you're a part of that. Um, you know, you can't really put a price tag on that. So it's pretty cool. That's super true. Okay. Now on the opposite side, what do you like the least about your job? <laughs> the hours. <laughs> <laughs> the hours. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Like, I don't know, the worst things are just those 6 a.m. clients, you know, 5.30 client. I had one of those in my life. Not not many, because I would never go below that. But yeah, some some clients just want to train really early. And um, that would probably, and like, especially when I started training, like the whole, like, doing the early hours and then the late hours, mm-hmm. I would be so exhausted and by the end of it. I see a lot of trainers do this, too, where their their fitness gets, gets lower. Mm-hmm. You know, like their fitness kind of takes a shot. So that's definitely something I did not, uh, did not enjoy as much as I saw my fitness kind of take a, uh, you know, a dip. And that was because I, um, just the hours were all over the place and I was tired and that's probably the thing I, I least like. And that's why I say stick to your, stick to your schedule. Cause if you don't, you know, the thing that you're trying to provide to somebody else, it's taken away from yours. So. Yeah, no, that's a good point. So I guess that kind of segues into how does your job affect your general lifestyle? Yeah. So for, oh. For me, um, it was a big, it was a big thing for like keeping my, my health and fitness in check because I'm telling them to do it. So it's kind of like, I can't be hypocritical here. It would make me work even harder in the gym. Like I'm working out for my clients too, you know, so just for me, but it's for, to show them like I'm, I'm doing the same thing too. And then they get motivated from it. Okay. Um, I think we only have a couple questions left. What has helped you become successful as a personal trainer? Always be learning. Okay. Always be learning. A lot of people will think, a lot of trainers especially, because trainers are pretty smart. You know, you go to school and you learn about the body and stuff. And, you know, but there's a certain point where, you know, people think they're too smart and they, they, they can't learn anything more. And that's when trainers usually start to decline because they're not learning new methods or new ways to do something. So for me, always be learning, always having an open mind. Mm-hmm. So if a client says like, oh, like, let's try this, you know, maybe not just say no because I don't like it. But say like, all right, like why does he want to do this? Like maybe he wants to do this because back squats really hurt his back or front squats really hurt his wrists. So maybe we need to do goblet squats or mm-hmm. Dan John is one of the top training condition coaches in, in, in uh, I would say in America, but I'll say in California, but um, he always says the goal is to keep the goal, the goal, Yeah. you know, like if you're trying to jump farther or higher in track, why are we talking about curls or why are we talking about, um, <laughs> you know, things, things like just keep the goal, the goal. If we're trying to win a championship with football, we don't need our linemen to have six packs. You know, we need our linemen to be big and like be like unmovable and be strong. So just keeping the goal, the goal, you know, is in there as well. Great. What are some current issues in the field I should be aware of? That's a good question. <laughs> that is a good question. I would say there's a lot, unfortunately, there's a lot of false information. Yeah. A lot of false information in the field. So knowing what you know is right based off of experience, mm-hmm. not just based off a headline, off mm-hmm. of a credible article, because as we know, even credible things can be wrong sometimes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, everyone thinks that drinking a shot of apple cider vinegar is going to help lose weight 10 times faster. Right. Where it's like, same with lemon water a few years ago. Same with, they have this like belt that wraps around you that like, the waist, trainer. like, the waist trainers or um, they have this like gel or something that you can rub on you or something like this. Like, yeah, it's just, oh, there's a lot of stuff out there, man. And like people yeah. will buy it because they're desperate to do anything besides the hard work. 
And so, you know, getting into the field, just knowing that like, all right, who I'm learning from is a credible source as well as try to challenge them as well. Like those, the people that are like, please prove me wrong are usually smart people and they like always are trying to learn. The people who are like, I know this and I'm the best. And I are usually the people who are trying to like overly compensate what they don't know. Um, and so false information has been a huge thing because sometimes I'll, I'll be speaking to, a, and, you know, everyone's an expert these days. If you just go on the internet, everyone's an expert. So you'll train a client and a client will literally tell you like, oh, I read the other day this, or I saw the other day this. And you just have to tell them like, hey, like, nice. Like, I respect that. How much did you read into that? And like, oh, well, I read the headline. I might read, like, all right, well, let me tell you why it's not, you know? And mm -hmm. you can kind of back up your facts with experience, like, you know, with certain clients you've trained or your, self, your personal experiences, you know, friends' experiences that you know about, or even experiences that you learn from, like, you know, in class, or if you watch a video, these people are telling you things off of experiences. Like, so false information in the fitness industry is unfortunately a big thing. And then um, a lot of people will think that people with six pack abs and, and great bodies just know everything. But in, in, reali in reality, they're just like, they just either one are genetically gifted or they just know how to, you know, be anorexic and look good. You know, like there's a lot of times where like a lot of people who because, you know, you get on stage, right? And we always look up to, like, the Arnold Schwarzenegger, even though people are starting to kind of get, like, they're roided at the F out. You know, or, like, people on stage when they go to the bikini contest where it's, like, they only ate, like, 500 calories a day for the last, like, 12 weeks. Like, that's not sustainable forever. You know, mm -hmm. when you get up on stage, that's, like, a one – it's, like, an event, you know? Mm -hmm. So just knowing, you know, that kind of stuff is, like, sometimes what you see in the fitness industry isn't actually the, the right thing. And sometimes what you don't see or doesn't look as sexy or something is the right thing. You just got to put a lot of it to practice. So false information. You know, yeah. I, I can talk the whole hour about that. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah. I totally hear you. I've definitely found my number of silly questions and speculations. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't. And then you start to, you know, if you hear enough of it, you start to be like, is that right? Like, no, 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 I know it's not right. Like, I know it's No, it's so much like, yeah, people just want to do the quick fix, take the pill, you know, yeah. fast what? for 84 what? hours, whatever. No, I, some guy had me tell me the other day, he goes, hey, I'm on a 24-hour water fast. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I don't drink water. It was like 48 hours, it was a long time. And I was like, dude. Just not drinking water? How do you, yeah. I was like, how do you think to like get rid of water weight or something? Like, how do you think that's like, you're going to gain that back right when you start drinking water again, first of all. And like, yeah, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. It's sad. It's, it's really insane. Like what people mm. are willing to do and put their bodies through without realizing the damage that it causes. Yeah. And doing it without even like talking to their doctor. Like some people do keto and it's like the worst thing for them. And they just, yeah. And they just do it because it's a popular thing. Yeah. You know, it's I, like we live in a big, big high school or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, Stacy had great results. Yes. Had great results too. Exactly. It's like, no, 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 no. Please, please, please. Right. <laughs> what are some big projects you're working on right now? I saw something about an app on your Instagram. Yeah. So right now I'm growing uh, my, my training app. So I have, um, my online coaching program, online training uh, is through an app where, you know, back in the day, it used to be through Excel sheets and emails and Word documents. You just, uh, with the app, you can, you know, go in there. I have a calendar. You have videos for the workouts. We have tracking software to track your progress throughout, you know, strength progress, weight progress, body measurement progress. So it's all about tracking, managing the progress, and then still providing the workouts, the right programming to that client. Like, are they trying to tone up and gain strength with minimal equipment? Are they trying to just efficiently learn as much as they can at the gym and then also just realizing where they're at in the fitness in their fitness like journey are they a year in are they five years in are they 10 years in and then you can kind of like manipulate and like create the program based off of where they're at so that's kind of what i'm working on a lot right now is the online training platform on the online training app and then learning again still learning as much as i can through like orange theory the heart rate training learning a lot through stuff i haven't done in the past so like i've done a lot in the past but things i haven't done would be like the heart rate training you know or specific tabata type like your heart rate really high get it low and then also a uh, big project i'm trying to learn is um all yoga but recovery programs like mm -hmm. how can we you know, go from a, uh, a shoulder surgery, you know, what do we need to do in order to get you back? You know, like what exercises and what program can I design? Cause I don't really know that much. So I'm learning a lot there too. So mm -hmm. those will be the, the, the main two. And then uh, where do you uh, see yourself in five to 10 years? Ooh. Well, hopefully another COVID doesn't happen. Cause I, that's, that, who knows, oh, God. but uh, 
hopefully, you know, continue to grow my, my training app. I want to travel to these places to either train these clients as a group, like just do like a, you know, you're, you're part of mind body performance training app. You get free workouts when I go travel and do a group workout here. And then um, speaking, you know, I, I really want to start speaking to schools and like just telling kids how much health can really benefit them if they start young. I'm a big believer of starting young recently. So if they just start young and just have it in their minds, they don't really have to like work out all the time. Like just having it in their minds, like this is going to be healthy. Like thinking about the, like looking at the, the nutrition label when they're drinking something like, you know, realizing how much food that they need to eat to, to maintain their weight. So they're not losing a lot. Cause I know a lot of uh, girls will have, you know, issues with like models and pictures, which is horrible. So they don't eat and like you need to eat or like guys will, you know, feel like they need to be like super strong and do all these super workouts, but then they get hurt and just telling kids that. So like speaking, I would love in the next five to 10 years to be going all, you know, traveling and speaking to these schools and stuff. That's great. Yeah. You know. Um, are there any questions you would ask that I haven't or like things you would address that I haven't even thought of? Not one thing is just coming to mind, I guess. And since you've asked that, it didn't come up any time before, but you know, like how to deal with a difficult client. Mm. Um, and I, you know, that's maybe something cause you know, sometimes I had a hard time dealing with difficult clients. Mm. And my answer to be is, uh, not every client is for you. Yeah. And so like really figure out who you love to train. There's 7 billion people on the world. So you don't need to train all 7 billion of them. But if you can, <laughs> find, you'll, you'll love your job a lot more if you just train the people that you love and uh, you won't be like, oh, I have to train this person. Because there's always, you know, you have that cho choice. So I always say now before I train with somebody like, you know, before we start training, I don't want to just give you a program. Let's get on a call and see if we're a good fit. If we're a good fit, we go moving forward because it's just, if you really want to love what you do, you got to love the people you work with. I've, I've learned, I've hard, learned the hard way. Uh, Cause it'd be like hours where I'm just like, this is the longest hour of my life. Yeah. You know, I was like 55 minutes. We're done. You know, like, and there's some clients you just love. You just continue to go and you're like, I'm gonna give you an extra hour, not an extra hour, <laughs> but like, an, you know, an extra 10 minutes. I'm gonna go over a little bit for you. Cause mm -hmm. you really appreciate them. They put in all, all their, all their effort into you. They, they do whatever you say. And you know, those are the clients that you want to work with. So like just how to deal with a difficult client. You don't, you know, you, not every client's for you. You know, you just say, all right, you know, it doesn't look like we're a good fit. I'm, I'm going to recommend you to, mm -hmm. you know, John, I'm going to recommend you to Ashley or whatever, you know, you're, you're going to recommend them to different people, you know, cause you still want to give value. You don't want to just be like, I ain't training your piece. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, sorry, you suck. That's you know, well. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, you'd be like, all right, you know, just doesn't tell you we're a good fit. But, you know, what, what I would like to do is refer you to a couple of my, couple of my colleagues, you know, John or whatever. And, and, and usually they'll, they'll appreciate that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's not meant to be for everybody. Cool. Well, I mean, that's it for me. I really appreciate you taking time to like talk and it's also nice yeah. to just like talk to you with Malik. <laughs> I know, I know. How are you doing? That was the interview. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, share it with your friends. Share it with your training friends and your future personal training friends. Guys, remember, be certain in yourself. Be certain in your skills. And be consistent in your actions because consistency is key. See you next video.